Before you begin, review the precautions section. Review the downtime and backup preparation section. Review the procedural overview. Note, be sure to put on your electrostatic discharge wrist strap to avoid damaging any circuitry. Preparing for the replacement. If the controller enclosure or drive enclosure chassis is operational, do the following to shut down the storage system. Stop all I.O. to the storage system that includes the failed chassis and shut down all array controllers in the system. To shut down the array controllers, access the SMU. Click System on the left sidebar. Then click the Action button and select Restart System. Set the following options and then click OK. Operation. Shutdown. Controller Type. Storage. Controller. A and B. After the controller is shut down, the blue OK to remove LED on the controllers illuminates. Turn off power and cooling module switches, if present. Make sure the cables are clearly labeled and then disconnect the cables, including the power cords, from the modules. Important! Use caution when handling the fiber channel cables. Touching the end of a fiber channel cable either damages the cable or causes performance problems, including intermittent difficulties accessing the storage. When a fiber channel cable or port is not connected, install protective covers on the ends of the cable or in the device port. Removing drive and drive blank modules from the failed chassis. Caution! These procedures require that all drives be removed from the failed chassis and then installed in the replacement chassis. Because drives are heavy, HP recommends removing drives prior to moving the chassis. If this is not possible, two or more people are required to lift the chassis. Remove the drives after confirming that all internal movement has halted. As a best practice, remove the drive and drive blank modules in bay number sequence and organize them on your work surface in the same sequence. This helps ensure that you reinstall the modules in the same bay number from which they were removed. Press and slide the release latch button to release the latch handle. Rotate out the latch handle to disengage the module from the internal connector. Pull the module straight out of the chassis. Moving power and cooling modules to the replacement chassis. Remove the power and cooling modules from the failed chassis. Turn the thumb screws until the screw disengages from the module. Rotate the latch downward to disconnect the module from the internal connector. Pull the modules straight out of the chassis. Moving controller, I.O., or air management modules to the replacement chassis. Important! Modules must be reinstalled in the same bays from which they were removed. Installing a module in a bay other than the one from which it was removed may result in loss of access to the storage. Remove the modules from the failed chassis. Turn the thumb screws until the screws disengage from the module and rotate both latches downward to disengage the module from the internal connector. Pull the module straight out of the chassis. Removing the failed chassis from the rack. Remove the ear bezels by grasping each bezel firmly and pulling until the bezel separates from the ball nuts on the chassis ear. Remove retaining screws securing the front and rear of the chassis to the rack and rails. Remove the chassis from the rack. Place the failed chassis on the work surface near the replacement chassis, moving side brackets to the replacement chassis if equipped. Installing the replacement chassis in the rack. Support the bottom of the chassis and place the chassis in the rack. Secure the chassis to the rack. Install the ear bezels by aligning each bezel with the ball nuts on the chassis ear and pressing firmly until the bezel clicks in place. Installing controller, I.O., or air management modules to the replacement chassis. Important! Modules must be reinstalled in the same bays from which they were removed. Installing a module in a bay other than the one from which it was removed may result in loss of access to the storage. With the latches in the open position, Slide the module into the chassis as far as it will go. Rotate the latches upward to engage the module with the internal connector, and then turn the thumb screws finger tight. Install power and cooling modules in the replacement chassis. 
With the latch in the open position, slide the module into the chassis as far as it will go and rotate the latch upward to engage the module with the internal connector. Then, turn the thumb screw finger tight. Installing drive or drive blank modules in the replacement chassis. Important! Reinstall each drive or drive blank module in the same bay number from which it was removed. With the latch in the open position, slide the module into the drive slot as far as it will go. Rotate the latch closed until it clicks. Completing the process, reconnect data cables to the original cabling configuration. As needed, connect cables between cascaded drive enclosures, between the first and last drive enclosure, and the controller enclosure. Between the controller enclosure and the host, reconnect power cords to the devices. Turn on power and cooling module switches if present. Restart system devices in the following sequence, allowing time for each device to complete its power on self-tests, or post, before proceeding. Drive enclosures, controller enclosures, hosts. Perform a rescan to force a fresh discovery of all drive enclosures connected to the controller enclosure. This step clears the internal SAS layout information and reassigns enclosure IDs based on the cabling sequence. This ensures that the enclosures are numbered correctly. To perform a rescan, click System on the left sidebar. Then click the Action button and select Rescan Disk Channels. In the dialog box pop up, select Rescan. Before you can